Pat Love back from Love Healing Hearts. Here to kind of segue from the other video. What I'm dealing with is coming to God with two keys, faith and humility. Now, I want to share something with you. You know, there are some of us who have had so many skeletons in our closet and so many emotional scars <clears throat> in our psyche that it's very difficult to move forward, isn't it? It's very difficult to get uh, victories over certain issues. It's, it's difficult to move past certain barriers that have plagued us for many, many years and decades of our lives. Even though we hate the barriers, the barriers remain. <clears throat> and we know as Christians that Jesus is more than able, more than willing to deliver us from all of our sins, to deliver us from all unrighteousness and cleanse us. However, there are some that are very, very difficult to get over. Now, as I'm talking, I hadn't planned on sharing this, but this is what the Lord is putting on my mind. If any of you get a chance to watch this movie, I believe the name of it is, I believe it's Sleepers, S-L-E-E-P-E-R-S. -E -E you can find it on YouTube sometimes. Well, when I watched the movie, I noticed how emotionally scarred these boys had been since they got in trouble and were sent to a detention school where they were horribly abused and sexually molested in the most inhumane ways. Repeatedly for the total time they served. And as a result, not one of them got married and had kids. Not one of them were able to lead a perfectly normal life because there were barriers and those barriers came from scars and the scars came from abuse. So moving right along, let's make my point. <clears throat> there was a man in our church years ago that we all referred to as Uncle Boo. <laughs> he was such a loving, oh, he was such a loving man. He, it was like he was my uncle. He was so sweet. And I remembered some of the things he shared with me to encourage me. Well, one time, my father, I'm just sharing you a little uh, background. When my father was in the hospital, there was I was seeing him every day. And there was one day, it was so difficult for me because I, I felt like the hospital wasn't treating him that well. And no matter what I said, it didn't seem to do much good. And I would see the discomfort on my father's face. And that was very hard for me to deal with. It really hurt my heart. So one day, I, I was like, I, I can't go up now. I just can't. And I had to pray that through. Listen to this. I went to the hospital about toward the evening and I was feeling so bad that my father didn't have any visits and when I walked in the room I'm sorry to get so emotional there was Uncle Boo sitting with my father for hours and hours the hours I would have spent and I could not, he was there. That man will never know what that meant to me for him to do that. I ah, didn't expect to get so emotional. I look bad enough after being sick and now I'm looking worse. But anyway, listen, you guys. Uncle Boo sitting in that room was like a shot in the arm for me. I needed that. I needed to see that somebody else cared for my father besides me. <clears throat> now the saints in the church who had the victory, who were living perfectly holy lives, they were not there. The leaders in the church 
who were great leaders and great teachers, great preachers. They were not there. The, the ladies in the church that, that had little children's ministries and taught Sunday school, who were on the usher board and the church auxiliaries and all of that, they were not there. But this man, who did not yet have the victory over his hurdle, over his obstacle, was there because of the love in his heart. Now let me tell you this, and I say this to make this point. Some of you have been struggling for so long that you are so ready to just throw in the towel on yourselves and on God, on life itself. Don't do it. Because I want you to see what God sees when he looks at you failing and failing. When your heart yearns to do it right. Uncle Boo had a drinking problem. We don't know why. We don't know all the ins and outs of what happened in his life. You know, he's been dead and gone for decades now. But he was a kind, oh my goodness, he was a kind, caring soul. He had a father's heart. He, he just loved people. This man would hit the altar over and over and over again, struggling, trying to break through because he would do well for a while and then fall back into his alcoholism. He would do well a while and fall back and he would fail and fail and fail. Do you hear what I'm saying? Now listen, one of the ladies in the church who was one of the preachers told me this story. And I want you to hear this because this is God's compassionate understanding standing, patient heart. And I want you to know just how loving and patient he is with you as well. This man had failed so many times that the woman told me on her knees while talking to God, she was so exasperated and kind of uh, disgusted with all of these failures. And she literally told God, Lord, I don't know if praying is going to do any good. This man, don't, I can't tell if he really is trying, if he's if he really wants deliverance. Every time you turn around, he's right back there again. I don't know what his problem is. And she started to get that feeling like maybe he really didn't want to try. Maybe it was just a little religious game, just hit the altar to, to clear his conscience for that day so he can go hit the bottle the next week. <laughs> God spoke to her with an audible voice. And he spoke and said this, and I quote, according to her quote, you see him as failing and failing. I see him as trying and trying. Listen, you guys, God knows your heart. He knows what's in your way. He knows what has happened to you. He knows the scars that are your barriers. He knows the wounds that trip your feet up day in, day out. He knows the psychological battles you have to fight through just to get out of that bed and face the day and face the people in your day. He knows what you have to deal with. He knows how you hate yourself because of your weaknesses and how how you just can't seem to get the victory. God knows how you feel. He knows you. And he has not given up on you. When Jesus died on the cross, when he took those stripes, the, the whippings on his back, those torturous whips on his back, just like the slaves had to deal with, when Jesus took that on his back, it was for everything you're going through right now. Don't give up. Jesus didn't run when they whipped him. 
He didn't escape and say, no, I'm not going up on that cross. If he can do it, you can do it. If he didn't give up on you, don't you give up on you. Don't give up on yourself. God is more than able. He's patient. He's long-suffering. He knows those that are playing games, and he knows those of you who really, really are trying and trying in spite of your failures. Keep on trying. Keep on getting up. I watched a little silly movie. It was a fantasy about how this boy was in this flying school, and he was on a fantasy island where uh, they had dinosaurs and giant birds and all kind of stuff. And he had to learn how to ride on the backs of these birds. And he trained and trained and he failed and he failed and he trained and he failed. He was humiliated and he failed and he got back up and he trained. Even when nobody was there, he was training himself. And one day they told him, you failed. You're not a pilot. You're no longer a part of this, this whatever organization, you know, sorry, Charlie, but that's it for you. Charlie steps down. He goes on his way with his head hung and his tail tucked between his legs. And when everybody's gone and all is said and done, he goes back with a vengeance and says, no, I won't give up. That was his attitude. And he heads back up those stairs and holds his arm up for that bird to come to him. And that giant bird came. He got on that bird's back and he flew like a champion. And I say to you, you get on that baby's back and you fly like a champion. I don't care how much, how many times you fail. You keep getting up. Because one of those days, something's going to click inside of you. And the witness of God's presence and power is going to resonate inside of you. And you're going to have the victory. But whether you get it totally or not, remember, Jesus paid it all. So you don't have to pay for your sins anymore. Just keep asking God to help you. And trust in his love to see you through victoriously or not. God bless you. You be encouraged. You serve a loving father. You serve a strong God. You serve a patient and long-suffering, compassionate father. And yes, he is your father. And yes, you are his child. As wayward and as broken as you may be, you are his child. And he is still your father. God bless you. Be encouraged.